Hello, I'm Mason. Welcome to Monimation. The aim of this series is about sharing with you how I design, draw, and code a shark game in Scratch. So, welcome, welcome to episode 3. Last time we have code the interaction between our mouse and our sprite, aka our shark. If you missed that, go back to watch episode 2. In this episode, we will modify and extend our code and to add one more way to interact with our sprite via the keyboard. Our plan is that our shark can swim in both directions following the X position of our mouse pointer. And when we press the space bar, the upper body of our shark will appear above water. Okay, after this long explanation, we better start drawing. Drawing time! Let's select our shark fin sprite, then duplicate, and add one more costume. Let's move the fin aside, and draw using the brush tool, like this. This will be the body. Okay, we can edit the curve to remove excessive control points. Also, we move the point downward to form the upper body of our shark. Now, the silhouette of a shark is formed. We duplicate the center part of our shark and make it pink. This will be the belly of our shark. Resize it using the arrow tool Use the color picker, the dropper tool, to pick a particular color we have used on our sprite. Now we start to draw the eyes. Very easy. To draw the mouth, first we use the circle tool to make it circle. Then we adjust the shape using the control points. Once you are satisfied about the shape, duplicate the to be mouth thing. I want to show you how I make the teeth of our shark by erasing the excessive part of our mouth shape thing. Erase the unwanted area. Make it white and move it into place. I want the shark mouth in a deep red color. Then I will use the same technique to make the shark tongue. Adjust everything's positions, then I can add an outline to make it a bit thicker. I like this way to draw a mouth. I think it is nice and neat. And finally, in order to show you that my shark is a shy and healthy shark, I add these two pink things on her cheek. Or his cheek. Putting everything together, mm, let me adjust it a bit. My shark is finished. Later, I will add the fourth costume for our shark. Basically, I just duplicate the third one, and in the fourth one, I adjust the size of her or his mouth. You can do it now or do it later. 
We move on to talk about the pressing keyboard event. Before we use whether the key is pressed or not as a testing condition for our if then block, I want to simply show you how keyboard pressing as an event can trigger the sprite to do something. In our case, switch costume. If you want to know more about the if then block, we have talked about it in episode 2. Now, we also drag out broadcast message 1 and another event when I receive message 1 to facilitate my demonstration. So, now we have two more events. First, when the keyboard space key is pressed, it will broadcast message 1. Then, when the shark sprite receive message 1, it will switch its costume to costume 3. The idea of broadcasting and receiving is like somebody ring the doorbell and when you hear the doorbell, you go to the front door and ask who are you? When we test it, you may think it is not working. But when you observe closely, you can see the costume is actually changed, but it is too quick, so we cannot see it. So now, I add another block to let it wait so our human eyes can notice. To sum up, in this demonstration, we have explored one way to affect our sprite via some kind of user input. As always, please like, share and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. This is the end of part A. Stay tuned for part B. 